Hey guys, how are you doing today? It's P.E. Gilbert, your blogger, writing consultant, and the author to the fantasy novella, The Sultan's Daughter. And today, we are honoured to have an interview with S. Raven Storm. S. Raven is a romance author who blends the contemporary, the paranormal, and the erotic into her stories, such as the Someone For Me series, A Witch's Proposition, and Chance and Sage, among other books. S. Raven is a delightful, charming, and funny person. Here is the interview. Enjoy. So let's hear a bit about you. Where do you come from and how has this place influenced your writings? Well, I am from Queens, New York, actually. Um, but I spent the last 20 some years in a small town in North Carolina. And now I live in Dover, Delaware. And how it's influenced my writing, not much, but my first three books, well, actually my first four books, uh, took place in North Carolina. And um, it was kind of a blend of reality and fiction. Uh, and then for my witch's proposition, it actually takes place in New York. So that's about the extent of it because to me, um, my writing, it doesn't come from past histories. It comes from present voices. I'll put it that way, even though that might sound a little strange, but yes. <laughs> it doesn't sound strange at all. It sounds like the makings of good stories, if you ask me. Plenty of interesting people around. No two ways about that. Right. Um, S. Ravenstorm is a really cool author's name. How did you come up well, with Thank this? you. Well, S stands for Stephanie, which is really my name. And the, the Raven part, when I was in high school, they named me Raven because they said I was a free black bird, but I had a dark side. And I really did not like that much. And, um, but it kind of stuck because people would just call it, call me that. And you know how that is. I think the more you dislike something, the more people want to use it. And then Storm comes from X-Men. I'm a Marvel freak. I love Marvel. And uh, I love the X-Men. So that's where Storm came from. And it's so funny that um, it took me to being an adult to really like the name Raven because I one day came upon uh, Edgar Allan Poe's book, The Raven. And I fell in love with that piece. And then I started researching and, and just thinking about uh, like the Vikings with Odin and, the, and his ravens. And then the Bible has ravens in the story so ravens is pretty cool you know um it's so funny like i said it took me being an adult for me to get to that point where it's like okay yeah i like raven so now i use that more than anything else and my mom has a fit with it and she's like that's not your name that's not your name <laughs> so <laughs> um it's funny you mention about the X-Men, because I thought Raven actually came from the X-Men as well as Storm, uh, mm -hmm. Raven Mystique. Uh, so yes. That's cool. And you're absolutely right about taking the name that others gave you. And in the words of Tyrion Lannister, wearing it like armor. And that way, no one can ever use it against you. I exactly. Like that, I like that a lot. Um, and, that, and I've got to say again, it's a really cool author's name, S. Raven Storm. It's perfect for what you write in. Thank you. Since 2015, you have published nine books, if I'm correct. Yes. That's almost two a year, which is seriously impressive. I mean, it's astonishing. Thank you. Um, <laughs> do you have a daily word target? And how do you maintain your writing stamina? To be honest with you, no, I don't. And I am in such awe of those people that I see on Facebook and they're like, oh, I can't talk to you right now because I got another uh 250 words to do or um, i'm only halfway through i'm amazed at people who can do that i'm not that disciplined unfortunately that's not me my writing is up and down 
it's more or less who's talking and how much. I leave everything up to my characters. I, you know, I have been right in the middle of a book and characters from somewhere else would come in. I would have to stop writing and write another, another book because their voice is just that loud. Um, so it's all about who's talking. I'm sorry, let me get centered. Uh, who's <laughs> talking and, um, you know, basically how much they're talking. The more they talk, the more I write. Well, it seems to be working for you, whatever you're doing, uh, whether it is starting another book halfway through a chapter and, and a good chapter at that. Uh, nine books in five years is extremely impressive. Again, you know, you don't need to be an, an, an envy or awe of anyone that has word targets. If this is the way you're writing and it's prodigious at that, you know, just keep up with it. Just keep doing it. Well, thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Just you know, keep making your readers happy. Um, <laughs> um, all of your books, including the Someone For Me series, A Witch's Proposition and Chance and Sage, are in the romance genre, but cross subgenre lines. By this I mean that your books fuse contemporary, paranormal and erotic romance. What made you decide to fuse the romance, the romance subgenres? I didn't. It just happened. <laughs> to be honest with you, my first, my very first book um, I wrote was contemporary, which was uh, someone for me. The cover, everybody thought it was urban because of the cover. I sent it out to publishers and they kept telling me, no, I'm sorry, we do romance. Um, this is paranormal. And I'm going, no, it's not. It's not paranormal. It has nothing to do with witches. It has nothing to do with vampires. But the fact that the key person had a sense of, of sight where she could see the future, it was paranormal. Who knew? So I said, okay, fine. It's paranormal. The second book was basically... Uh, more contemporarily than contemporary than paranormal, but you know they are very fickle in the book world. I was tagged a paranormal author, so I said, "Okay, so be it." So I went straight out paranormal with Lion's Queen and Someone for Me Three Stone Story, and I loved it. It's freeing because you know what? There's no guidelines. Because if somebody comes to me and says, hey, shifters don't do that, I'm going to say, well, what shifter do you know? <laughs> when was the last time you was with a vampire? That's a very good answer. Um, <laughs> I'd love to meet someone who has been with a vampire, truly. It'd be, uh, it would be an experience. <laughs> me too. Um, good answer. I like it a lot. Um, out of all the characters that you've written, which one is the least like you and how? To b believe it or not, none of them are like me. None of them are like me. As I say, the, the only, least like you. The least, all of them. Because then I, I don't draw any of myself from them. The only thing I can honestly say that in, I incorporate is the sex scenes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, do you want to um, elaborate on that, or, do, or would you rather just draw a line there? Oh, no problem. Because I draw from my experience of pillow talk mm -hmm. and my experience of positions, and it makes it more realistic to me when because it's very difficult to write sex scenes if you're not drawing from actual sexual uh history so to speak but everything else no the personalities they tell me who they are i i i have people that um that i i make them laugh and i tell them i'm always looking through stock photos and they said well why do you keep going through stock i'm looking for the character i can see them visually in my mind so then i try to find them in the stock photos. 
And once I do that, they become more lifelike. And I can draw from their personalities, their attitudes, their, their mannerisms, whether he likes to arch her eyebrow or she wrinkles her nose or, you know, or she flips her hair a lot. It's, they tell me and I see what their mannerism and, and attitudes are. Good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all of your books feature the color purple on their covers. What is it about the color purple that you like so much and what does it mean to you? Purple is beautiful. It is a beautiful, vibrant color. And a lot of people don't know. Purple means royalty. It means visionary. And it also means romance. I so two of those. Um, put it that way. <laughs> yes. So to me, um, purple, it just is, it's a, it's a meaningful color. It's a meaningful color. And a lot of people don't know that the color purple also draws from a different hue. It's the combination of the blue and the red that makes purple. So blue to me is cool, it's engaging, but red, red is fiery. And I just like that combination together. <laughs> I could imagine. <laughs> um, <laughs> your most recent book is Chance and Sage. What three things inspired you to write this story? Basically, my, my readers, because Chance and Sage is a spinoff from Tatum, A Wolf's Hunger. And I've had so many readers say, oh, when are you going to do a sequel? When are you going to do a sequel? That's how I fell into someone for me, one, two, and three. Um, because the readers won't let you go. It's like they, when they like something, they want you to continue the story. And... For some reason, I couldn't. I didn't want to continue with Tatum and Bristol. So what happened is one day, um, I said, you know what? Tatum and Bristol is happy. They've moved on with their lives and they have their own family. And then it hit me. Why not incorporate the kids? Make the kids the story. So actually from Tatum and Bristol, uh, Sage is their daughter. And then also in that first book, we had Scotty and Caitlin. And Chance is their son. So that's right. how that came to be. Does Chance and Sage or any of your other novels have a moral to it? Yes. All my, all my books have a moral. Would you the like moral, to uh, elaborate? Yeah. Oh, yes. The moral is a woman can be fierce, strong, a leader without a man, but she's so much better with one. And men can be soft and sweet when it comes to a woman they love, and they will be very protective and be alpha all the way when it comes to protecting their own. And I love that about my books, is that the women are not the shivering, you know, going to faint and, oh, my gosh, oh, my God. No, they are the ones that are saying, hey, I will whoop your ass if I need to. And I love that about them. Um, my book also lets you know that you can find love in some of the most unexpected places at some of the most unexpected times. And that's what I love about my books. I can tell they're good morals <laughs> as well. It's lovely to see and hear. Thank uh, you. My pleasure. When people talk to you about your books, how do you feel when they discuss with you the more, shall we say, intimate scenes that you've written? Do you feel proud, fine, embarrassed, or do you cringe? Oh, I feel proud 
because anything that they take from my book, it means it resonated with them or it's something that they felt. And that's the whole purpose of writing is to get people to feel. You know, I have a lot of friends, they get upset when they say, oh, they gave me two stars because they said blah, 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 blah. Okay, but they had an opinion about it. They had an opinion. It's something that resonated with them, whether they liked it or they disliked it. You're not going to get everybody to agree with your point of view, but to have it engaged in the conversation about that point of view, that's the key. So when they come to me and they say, oh my God, I, I was reading, and I've had people do this. I was reading your book and I had to look around because it was like, oh my God, I can't believe she wrote this. But did you continue reading it? Oh, yes. <laughs> I even read it to my husband, you know, and he said, what in the world kind of porn are you reading? <laughs> you know, That's so a, that makes me feel good. It, <laughs> that makes me feel good. I can so tell. Anything, yes. Anything that my readers get, whether they don't like a character, that's an emotion. That means I wrote that character so well that you personally have a dislike for this character. I agree. That's exactly the right response to whether someone likes or doesn't like a character or a scene that you've written. The fact that you've, you've touched them enough and they, that, to make them have a response. I think that's perfect. Um, right. And please, God, you have many more such responses from people. <laughs> it's a you. sign that not only is your work being seen and read, it also means that you're engaging your audience, which is so important and vital right. to succeed. Thank you. Again, my pleasure. It's you who deserves the credit here, not me. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite questions to ask. If you could go back in time, and speak with a younger S. Raven Storm, if that were her name, of course, when you were younger, what advice would you give her about the writing process? Don't believe the hype. Every writer is not going to be Stephen King. Every writer is not going to be a Joanna Lindsay. Every writer is not going to be on every talk show. Uh, to discuss how great their book is and sell millions and millions of copies. It does not work like that. Royalty is not royal all the time. <laughs> I have averaged, I have had a month where I got a check for 200 and some dollars. I've had months when I got 26 cents. So it's, it's, it's not like that. And I would also tell her, trust in those who know. Um, they are there for a reason, whether they are editors, uh, formatters, uh, graphic people, trust, pay for it. You're paying for something that's worthwhile. My very first book I had to have done over because a friend of mine, she was a teacher and she said she taught English and she, um, did my book. Oh my gosh. Oh no. It was terrible. Oh, but I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know until after the fact. Um, when we read our own books, we are reading with our minds of what we wrote. So we don't always see the errors. It takes a third eye or a third person or a secondary person. So pay for it. There's people out there to do this for a living. So that's what I would tell myself. Pay for it. Don't believe the hype. If you're in this to make money, forget about it. But if you're in this because it's something that makes you feel good, then do it. You sound very wise. You sound like you've learned a lot over the years. Oh, yes, I have. Oh, believe me. Oh, yes, I have. We'll come to that in a, in a, in a question very shortly. What is the hardest part of the writing process for you? Believe it or not, blurbs i hate blurbs i can't understand how i can write a whole book and when it comes down to a summation of what that book is i'm going absolutely crazy i hate blurbs i i i, I wish someone would have 
uh, uh, some type of business where that's all they did was blurbs because they could they would have my they would have trust me I would be their their main source of income please. Well, you found do the right blurb. person because this is what I do. I actually do help. Really? Blurbs. Yes, I'm a marketer. <laughs> um, and one of the things I do, I mean, my USP uh, helped me got, get my most recent job is that I turn the complex into the simple. So you ever need some oh. help on that one? Um, anyone else watching this as well? Happy to help. <laughs> well, blurbs of my one and the other is time. It's never enough time in the day. I work full time. I come home, I have a family. So I'm usually averaging anywhere to four to five hours sleep because I'm writing. I'm writing, I'm doing social media. I'm trying to engage with other writers. I'm learning, I'm researching. It's, it's never enough time in a day. I completely agree with you. Um, what is your writing kryptonite? Time, once again. My writing kryptonite would be time. Time and, and, and focus. Because, like right now, I wish I could be... When we talked about um, the, the authors who do um, uh, the, the uh, amount of words a day, I have friends that write two and three books at a time. How in the hell do you do that? I'm right now battling because I have two books that's in my head. And only, and I'm, I can't write both at the same time. I just can't. And um, so my kryptonite is being able to focus on one thing and have time to do it. So that is, time is my kryptonite. Good. Uh, that is a big kryptonite. <laughs> this is, we have alluded to this question already. How has writing changed you as a person? I think it's made me realize that um, there's so much more out there. Whether it's in my mind or in the facetious world. It's just a lot out there to gain. Um, it's my calming place. Writing calms me. Uh, I know a lot of people say, oh my God, don't you go crazy? You know, no, that calms me. It takes me to another place, another dimension that I'm able to go in and it's peaceful, it's relaxing. Um, also meeting, meeting all these authors that I would never ever have met before except through social media. And I mean great ones, great authors. And, and I read their books. I try to um, read new authors at least, you know, once every two, three times a month. Because there are so many. There are so many out there. And to me, what has changed my life is peace. I get a peace and a calming from writing. I really do. I believe you. I can see it. <laughs> that smile alone tells me it's true. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You've reached that destination. You know, it's, you deserve the praise for it. It's hard to get there. Are you writing another book at present? And if so, could you tell us a bit about it, please? Well, actually, I've started two, just like I said. <laughs> I got to, both of, both books are outside of my comfort zone and my wheelhouse. The first is going to be a, a contemporary that deals with self-esteem. Um, it's about a woman who, contrary to what I normally write, has, is doubtful of herself. She is a wallflower. She is reserved to look and not engage. And that's completely different than any of my, my females. Um, First, I'd like to say that it sounds like a really interesting protagonist. Um, I look yes. forward to that for sure. Yes. And the second book is going to be historical romance. 
I love historical piracies, uh, Vikings. I, I love all those kind of things. So this book is going to be a pirate's book. And it's going to be about a all-female pirate crew. Which era? Um, I'm looking at the 17th. When everything century was, or the 1700s? The 1700s. So I, I, I want it to be more of a Caribbean when the Jamaica runs was going on, when um, England was trying to stop a lot of things from taking place, uh, the new world was coming into, you know, the world was just developing into its powers all the way around. Sounds very interesting. I'm picturing a female Jack Sparrow at the moment, a swashbuckling female pirate. Exactly. That's exactly how it's going to be. It's a little twist in turns. Um, the book is actually, um, her, her father dies and she was all, the only um, child. So he raised her to be the son that he never had. And he was a very prominent man with a lot of wealth, but a lot of his wealth came from the criminal aspect of life as being a pirate. And a lot of people did not know that. And he knew he was dying. So the first thing he wanted to do was take care of her. her. So he was, uh, made it so that she would be getting married to this other man who he knew was in need of financial gain. Because at that time, her being a woman without a husband, all her wealth would go to the government. Well, of course, she's not happy about that. And she doesn't want to get married. And of course, he's not happy about it because he doesn't want to get married. And so she marries him through proxy. And the, the key is as long as he gets his allowance, stays away, leaves her alone, that all is well and good. So the key is later on down the line, and I'm going to give you a little peek, even though I shouldn't, they get together on the high seats. It sounds like a fascinating story. And yes. I, I'm looking forward to it already because I'm a huge history buff. I love it. I love these sorts of stories. Um, outside of writing, what do you like to do? Read. <laughs> That's number one. A lot of people don't know. I'm a lover of Shakespeare. I, yes. <laughs> Why not? He's a brilliant storyteller. Brilliant. Brilliant. And um, so I read a lot. I'm um, an English major. Not English, it's because I, I, I tell you right now, when it comes to nouns and pronouns, that's why I have an editor. But when it comes to English lit, um, so that's my thing. I love to read. I love to read and I love to cook. I love cooking Italian food. That is my, my go-to. Who doesn't love pasta? You know. Absolutely. Who doesn't <laughs> love pasta? I completely agree with you. Um, Lastly, is there anything else you'd like to say about yourself, your inspirations, and all your books that you haven't said already? My inspiration, and I'm hoping that one day I can fulfill it. Um, once again, time is, is, is my enemy. Um, I would like to learn how to write a screenplay. I would like to take one of my books and have it featured on Netflix, sci-fi, or whatever. I think they're just that good. And I would love to be able to do that. And that's what I'm concentrating on right now. Um, I am taking a few courses. Um, it's completely different. A lot of people don't understand that uh, screen writing is completely different than writing a novel. Because with a novel, you take time to uh, show each and every movement each and everything so that the person can see and smell and taste what 
you have in your head. While, while uh, screenwriting is visual, so everything is shortened. And as you can see, I love to talk. So it's kind of hard for me to condense that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you for watching, and I really hope you have enjoyed this interview with S. Raven Storm. Like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. And tell me, what did you make of the interview? What do you make of S. Raven herself? In the description below, I have left links to S. Raven's books. If you are a fan of the romance genre, then check out her stuff. Because regardless of whether or not you prefer the contemporary, the paranormal, or the erotic in your romance, S. Raven has written something for you. Moreover, my debut fantasy novella, The Sultan's Daughter, is out. If you like a book that is short, fast-paced, and full of suspense, then check it out. I have left a link in the description below for that as well. Otherwise, until next time, keep well. Once again, guys, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it and I hope you've enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button and then you will be the first to receive more awesome content from my channel. And I hope to see you again soon.